If you filled out your I-129F K-1 fiancé visa application and are wondering how you should compile everything together, I thought I'd share our very own K-1 visa packet for you to use as a template in order to assemble yours together, as well as some useful tips and tricks that we gained from our own research. Our K-1 visa application was approved with no request for evidence, and we completed the entire application ourselves without the help of a lawyer or an external company. Something to bear in mind when creating your visa packet is that USCIS will scan everything you send them into their system. So we made sure that our application was assembled in a way that adheres to this, so we didn't include any loose items or pieces of paper to ensure it didn't get lost. The first things to include at the front of your application is the visa payment of $535 or $675 if you're applying after April 1st of 2024. The payment can be made by check or by credit card. We decided to pay via check and the check should be made payable to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and written out as shown on the screen. If you decide to pay by credit card, you can fill out the form G1450 and it must be placed on top of your visa packet application. The next requirement is one color passport style photograph of yourself and one of your fiance taken within 30 days of filing the petition. The photos must be size 2 by 2 inches. On the back of the photo, we wrote our names lightly in pencil. This is in case it gets separated from our application for any reason, so that USCIS can identify the photo with the application. Furthermore, on the USCIS guidelines, it states using a pencil or felt pen, lightly print your name and A number, if any, on the back of the photos. We put these photos in a Ziploc bag so they stay protected and don't get lost within the filing, and we put both the check and photos at the front of our visa packet. Let me walk you through our K-1 visa packet. The first page is a simple title page which states the name of the form we are submitting and our names, highlighting who is the petitioner and who is the beneficiary. USCIS does state on their guidelines to mark the envelope and the cover letter with the form number. So for example, form I-129F. Although everything is a guideline, we followed as many guidelines as we could since we did this ourselves and weren't using an expert such as an agency or lawyer. If you do decide to fill out your application by hand, just make sure to write in black ink and documents should be single-sided on standard A4 8.5 by 11 letter size pages. Again, this is because USCIS will scan your application into their system, so you want to make sure that it's on the correct paper size and very legible for it to be scanned and read. The next page is our cover letter, and once again reinforces and summarizes what we are submitting. On the top right-hand corner, we included the petitioner's name and contact information. We added a title stating it is the I-129F application, and wrote a little summary stating that we are filing the I-129F in order to marry each other in the United States. The next page will show a table of contents and a statement that every document is dated, signed, and unaltered copies. Ending the letter with my signature and the petitioner's name and today's date. You're more than welcome to screenshot this and use it as a guide or template for your own application. So we included a contents page so that USCIS know at a glance what we've submitted and in what order. They can also see that we've included everything required, such as the initial evidence when submitting this form. Our aim was to make our application packet as easy as possible for the USCIS officer to read and navigate when processing our application. So as you can see, we kept everything very simple and minimal in an easy to read font. Our contents page states that we included the payment filing fee of $535. This will actually be $675 if you're submitting your application after April 1st of 2024. Two passport size photos of the beneficiary and the petitioner. Our G1145 e-notification application form. The I-129F petition. Our proof of meeting in person and proof of our relationship and then documents confirming both of our identities as well as letters of intent to marry from both of us. Depending on your circumstances, you may have additional items that you need to submit, 
but this is all that we included. I will add a full list of essential items that you must include. But if you're a couple like us who have never been married before with no dependents or children and no criminal records, then this is sufficient. We then included the G1145 form. This is free to download on the USCIS website and is not essential or required. But by filling it out, it means USCIS will send you a text message or email once they receive your application. So if you don't fill out this form, your only communication from USCIS will be by mail. Next is our actual I-129F application, which is 13 pages long. We have a detailed video on our channel which shows step-by-step -step how to fill out this form. It includes an additional extra page, which is the circumstances of our in-person meeting. Submitting evidence that you and your fiancé have met in person within a two-year period of filling this application is a requirement, and a written statement is counted as evidence of this. Again, feel free to use this page as a template for your own application. We then created another title page titled Proof of Relationship. Again, we kept things super simple, organized, and easy to read. You may have noticed that we haven't used any sticky tabs because upon knowing that USCIS scan items into their system, we wanted to keep things as simple as we could for them while simultaneously keeping things organized. We then included another contents page listing the type of documents we're including as our proof of relationship. We added our names as the petitioner and beneficiary at the top so that every page is identifiable, as well as a little summary stating, please find below <clears throat> a list of the documents provided of proof of our relationship as they appear in order. All documents are dated, signed, and unaltered copies. Within our proof of relationship, we included photos of our meeting in person, plane tickets to see each other, WhatsApp conversations, call logs between us, as well as the receipt for the engagement ring we purchased. Not all of these items are needed, but we want it to be as thorough as we can, and you may choose to do things differently, but from our research, the proof of relationship can include copies of travel documents, such as itineraries, airline tickets, boarding passes, hotel accommodations. It can be photocopies of both the petitioner and beneficiary's passport pages showing entry and exit stamps indicating that you have both been present in a given location at the same time. Letters written to each other after your meetings referencing the specific date and place of your meetings, as well as photos with the date and place mentioned. Just note that USCIS does state that any supporting documents must be in English or accompanied by a complete English translation, which the translator has certified as complete and accurate. We then added another title page for our photos together, which counts as proof of relationship evidence. This is our first page of photos. We included the date as well as a description from when the photos were taken, which was when we were in New York together. We kept the page simple and added two photos together. I highly recommend adding photos taken on your phone or camera into a Word document like we did and printing it out. Again, this is because USCIS will scan your entire K-1 packet and it avoids items being misplaced or ineligible to read or associate to your documents. Furthermore, you're then able to move the images around and also add descriptions to them, such as the time and place or anything that you wish to add. However, if you decide to submit photos or other attachments, USCIS states in their guidelines to provide your name on the back of the photos. They do not accept any digital media, photo albums, scrapbooks, or binders, which cannot be processed into their system. So I highly recommend being thorough with your application to avoid a delay in processing your application or a request for evidence. On the next page, we added more photos, which are from our engagement. As you can clearly see on the page, the date is visible, the description, and we've stated the location, plus it's a photo of us in person. Here are photos from our engagement party with friends in New York. We added a lot more photos onto the page. Just make sure they are clear and visible when arranging them onto a page and then printing them off. 
This page shows images with family. So when submitting photos, try and remember quality over quantity. You don't need to submit thousands of photos. It's more important to submit the right kind of photos to show that you have a genuine relationship and have integrated into each other's life with family and friends. So pictures with family and friends or trips away together hold more substance than just sending hundreds and hundreds of photos of you and your fiance together. Here we tried to show substance and included photos of us in Paris. It demonstrates that we've seen each other in New York as well as taken trips together, such as traveling to France. I would say submit as much evidence as you can, which proves you have a genuine relationship. It is better to submit more than less, yet at the same time, try to make sure you have a variety of photos. So this is just another title page to show the following is our travel receipts, such as boarding passes and plane tickets when we traveled together. Here's an example of our proof of travel together. So we wrote what the page is, which is a plane ticket to Jacksonville, Florida. We added the exact dates that we traveled, as well as a description of why we traveled to Florida, which was to visit family. We then included both of our boarding passes for the flight, which shows the date, our names, as well as seats booked together. So this is another example that demonstrates that we have met in person within two years of submitting our application, as well as proof of a genuine ongoing relationship. Here is just another boarding pass of us traveling together. Although you may not have traveled together with your partner, tickets or passport stamps to show that you visited them will count as proof of evidence. Once again, another document that shows we were traveling at the same time and date together with seats booked with each other. The next set of evidence that we decided to include were call logs to each other. Although call logs aren't at all required, we just wanted to include as much evidence as we could of an ongoing relationship, even though we were apart. All that we did was take screenshots from WhatsApp, which has the date and time of all of our calls together. You may wish to include this, however, it's definitely not mandatory. Here we also included screenshots of our FaceTime calls to each other. We did describe everything we were submitting on each place, such as it being call logs and FaceTime calls to each other, as well as the dates. The next page is our receipt for the purchase of an engagement ring. So this doesn't necessarily show any proof of relationship, but more so our intent to marry and evidence of our engagement. You may or may not have an engagement ring receipt, but you can submit whatever you feel may help support your relationship together. The next section is my, the petitioner's proof of US citizenship documents. And here I've added another title page to show that the following documents will be this. It is a requirement that the petitioner provide evidence of US citizenship. So that can be anything such as a passport or birth certificate. They also accept all these items on the screen here. I decided to include my passport, so I labeled the page as passport page and included my name as the petitioner. I actually also included my birth certificate as I wanted to be extra thorough. Even though one proof of evidence is enough, I decided to include both. So any documents that you submit only need to be photocopies and definitely not the original documents. Similarly, we did the same for my beneficiary, and so we created a title page for his proof of identity. As you can see here, we included his passport. So this isn't necessarily required or essential, nor do the USCIS guidelines ask for any identity documents of the beneficiary. However, the I-129F application does ask for their passport information to be entered in regarding the, any previous entries to the U.S., as well as their I-94 arrival departure records. So we decided it would be beneficial to just include a scan of his passport should, for whatever reason, USCIS need to run any further checks or require the document themselves. Again, similarly, we added his birth certificate, too. This won't be required till the embassy stages, but as we had it in hand, we decided to just include it with our application, but this is not a requirement. As the I-129F was asking details about the I-94 travel records, we decided to include my beneficiary's latest I-94 record when he had last come to visit. 
we downloaded this on the official website and again added this to our document, which we titled I-94 Travel Records with my beneficiary's name. The last section of our visa packet is our letter of intent to marry. USCIS require evidence from both the petitioner and the beneficiary of your intention to marry each other within 90 days of the beneficiary's admission into the United States. Statements of intent to marry signed by both parties is sufficient enough. The proof of ongoing relationship along with this letter will also act as intent to marry. So for instance, you could include evidence of wedding preparations, birth certificates of children born to the relationship, or evidence of financial support. So this is my letter as the petitioner of intent to marry. I added my details at the top of the letter, as well as today's date. And I wrote, I am the U.S. citizen, and we submit this letter of intent to marry as evidence and promise to marry each other in the United States. We are both legally able to and willing to marry within 90 days after his arrival to the USA with a K-1 visa. Then remember to sign the letter. Feel free to take a screenshot of this and use this as a template for your own application. We were unsure whether to submit individual letters of intent to marry or just one together. So as you can see here, this is exactly the same letter, but with my beneficiary's information and signature, also acknowledging that he is legally able and willing to marry within 90 days after his arrival to the USA. This is our joint letter of intent to marry, which is exactly the same as the previous two letters, but it is signed by both of us and dated. In our case, my partner and I were in the same location and together when preparing our K-1 packet, so we were able to sign any pages together. However, if you are apart from your fiancé, you can always sign by hand, scan and email a copy to each other, or mail the letter via postal services. So I decided to include a checklist that you can use as a reference to make sure you've included everything into your packet. These are the documents we submitted. However, your case may be different. So for instance, if you've been married before, you'll be required to submit proof that any previous marriages have been terminated by including a divorce certificate or an annulment certificate. Similarly, if you've had any criminal offenses, you'll need to provide certified copies of all court and police records indicating this. As you can see, no proof of financial support at all needs to be included with the initial filing. This will be another form that your beneficiary takes to their embassy visa interview. Here is a quick flick through of our K-1 packet after we've printed it out. When assembling everything together, you can see that we haven't used any staples, binders, or folders. We've just used a heavy clip to keep everything in place. Again, USCIS will need to disassemble everything to scan into their system. So ideally, you want to make things as easy as you can for them. They do state not to use anything that they cannot easily disassemble in their guidelines. Once you have everything ready, I highly recommend making a copy of everything you're submitting to USCIS. You won't get these documents back, and it's worthwhile having a record of what you're submitting should you need to reference it in the future. Furthermore, the forms you'll be filling out for adjustment of status require a lot of the same information that you're submitting now, so it's worthwhile having all the information on hand. We kept ours safely in a folder so we could keep all of the documents together, such as the application, NOAA 1, NOAA 2, all together. This packet can then be mailed to either of these addresses. We sent ours recorded delivery just to ensure that it was sent securely, considering it had all of our personal information on it, and at the same time, we could track that it had been delivered and reach USCIS safely. Your visa packet and application will then be sent to the California Processing Center. Should you need more information, the USCIS website does provide a document titled Instructions for Form I-129F, where they highlight the required documents when submitting your application. We also found the page Tips for Filing Forms by Mail useful too as a resource should you need any further information. I hope you found this video useful. Compiling the K-1 visa packet was confusing for us at first, and there weren't too many resources, so we wanted to make this video to help you along with your journey. If you have any questions or anything I can help with, please feel free to add it to the comments below.